Louisville and Cincinnati. Here's Damian Dantzler with a pretty feed to Alex Sanders for the slam. Louisville looking good early, but the Bearcats hang tough. Charles Williams. No look dish to Reuben Patterson, who throws it down. Patterson had 11 in the first half. Bearcats down by four at the break. Look out! Juan Wheat picking Darnell Burton's pocket, and Wheat has some hops. Bob Huggins not happy with his team's performance, and this is not going to make him smile anymore. Get the ball to Fortson. Get the ball to Fortson right now. Right. Too late. Sims is in there. Fortson finished with 16 points, but mostly on free throws. And look out! I told you to look out. Damon Flint, he gets it stripped from behind again by Wheat, who had 18 points. And Bob Huggins says, no, no, no. 81-70, the Ville. Majerus and the Utes going for their seventh straight win. Inside, Michael Doliak. That's an easy basket for him. And then, again, the same combo. Keith Van Horn to Doliak. And just the defense is just not there. Doliak had 13 in the first half. Utah up 12 at the break. Here's the Miners. Kimani Jones Young from way outside. And the deficit down to nine, but Van Horn didn't score in the first half. Here's the lob inside from Jordy McTavish, then throwing it down. Not a defender even close to him. Utah wins in a romp. Seven. Entering the first grade when the streak started, he said. Mike Bibby and Bennett, Dav Bennett Davison, they might have been in kindergarten. Wildcats up early. Later in the first, Isaac Fontaine. Colors between the lines there. Bucket. Cougars up by, only trail by six of the half. And in the second half, Michael Dickerson just too much. He ended up with 28 points as Arizona wins. So much for the Patriots losing in the Super Bowl. Ooh. Thank you. Arizona led these, they just love coach Rick Barnes, don't they? First half, Greg Buckner to Tony Christie. Clemson by seven. But Matt Harpring keeps it close. Nails the three, Tech pulls within two. The Tigers still roaring. Harold Jamison drives. Slams. Clemson would lead 38 35 30 at the half. Second half, more Harpering with the steal. Puts the move, spin move on Iker Arturbe. Tech down four, but then Terrell McIntyre comes alive. Alive, I tell you. Hitting the three. It's like he's playing around the world here. Now he's at the top of the key. 17 for the night. Clemson wins it 70 to 57. And Terrell McIntyre scored 14 of his 17 points. No Jermaine Tate, no problem. Sean Stonerook with a rejection on Patterson. How's this for turning the tables? The ref is yelling at Bobby Knight. Sit down, Bobby. And the Hoosiers had their hands full on the court. There's Otis Winston with a great hustle to make the save. Then the extra pass to John Lampkin. Throwing it down. Buckeyes doing just fine. And when things go your way, they go your way. Damon Stringer, pull-up jumper. Got it. He gets the shot. And the Buckeyes pull off the upset, 73 to 67. Damon Stringer, 18 points as the Buckeyes since USA action. Marquette, that was guard well, Anthony Pieper had to leave the game with a shoulder injury. Didn't matter because South Florida was busy launching bricks. They were 0 for 10 from three-point range in the first half. Now, regrettably, we're going to show you every one of their three-point misses. I don't wish this on my worst enemy, and I got plenty of them. Oh, don't uh, say that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I will after all these kids see them <laughs> missing every night. 19 three-point shots, and they did not hit one of them. And there is Seth Greenberg. 71. We first have Tim Duncan off to a rough start. What's this? A steal by Keith Booth. He's talented. He's the Terps best player, and that's a jam. Two of his 22. Maryland control in the second half. Obina Ikizi with a ball. Nice move, too. Puts the Terps up three, but then late in the second half, Wake would wake up. Duncan with a ball. This is the Tim Duncan we know, and at least the Demon Deacons sure love. 25 points in the second half with the Deeks up three, and then final chance for the Terps would wake up two. Booth the drive. Duncan got a piece of it, one of his three blocks, and the Demon Deacons hang on to beat Maryland. So after a first-half nightmare in which Wake committed 15 turnovers, Duncan and company lack first half. Charles Smith is your story. Great dish to Kenny Thomas. Thomas had 20. Lobos go on a 14-zip run. The spark, Mr. Smith, the steal, coast to coast. He doesn't get much pub. He should. Majerus not happy. 15 at the half was New Mexico's lead. And although the Lobos led by as many as 20, uh, the Utes would rally. Andre Miller ahead to Keith Van Horn to pull Utah within six. Lobos too much. Smith, the dish to Clayton Shields. New Mexico 
wins by 16, despite 28 points and seven boards by the game. The Huskers down only by two, but here comes Vincent Hamilton on the offensive glass. We're tied at 60, and we're going to overtime with the number one team in the nation. But that is where Rafe LaFrance takes over down low with the hoop and the harm. Kansas goes up by two. At the other end, it's Tyron Liu. Watch him off the dribble. It gets tipped out of his hand, but still, he manages to send it through. He had 29, but too much of that Rafe LaFrance. With two bodies on him hanging, gets another hoop and some more harm. He had a big overtime period, and Kansas escapes this one, 82-77 in overtime. LaFrenz, somebody moves the rim in this game. Bobby Jackson, air ball, then it's Sam Jacobson, doesn't hit anything. And then Jackson again, another air ball, and then Jacobson. Uh, folks, let's try to hit something metal, okay? Clem Haskins despondent. They were down two at the break. They've had such a great season so far. But here they come in the second half. There's Jacobson finally hitting something like the net. And then Jacobson again, and this time Jackson redeeming himself for the earlier air balls. Minnesota starts the second half on an 11-0 run. They come all the way back and down by nine. Second half, that's Dedrick Willoughby's shoe, and you'll notice it's not on his foot. But Kenny Pratt gets the shoe back to Willoughby, gets it out of bounds. That's good shoe movement, fundamental basketball. We like to teach the youngsters that. Later in the second half, Iowa State up eight. J.C. Holloway throws the perfect alley-oop to Cato. Another thump in the night. Minutes later, Dedrick Willoughby with his shoe back on. Gets the three to go down, and that was the backbreaker. Iowa State winning it by 14. Cato leads. But Nazi Muhammad is there to make it 44-28 Wildcats at the half. Second half, Jared Prickett on D. Now watch him on offense. Rick Pitino beats his former assistant, Tubby Smith, again. Moving to the ACC, we showed you earlier Wake beating Maryland, number seven Clemson, heading to Durham to face NC State. Herb Sendek looking for his first conference win. Late second half, pack down to Danny Strong. He can be dangerous when distant. He is there. NC State up one, but 10 seconds to go. Clemson down two. Terrell McIntyre, drive, but watch the ball. It goes clearly off of NC State's Justin Ganey and out of bounds. So what do the refs do? Well, they rule it that it's NC State's ball. So Pack run out the clock. Fans swarm the court to celebrate the Pack's first home floor. The only time they would actually play in the core state spectrum during the regular season, Mark Jackson muscular bullish inside 20 points 14 rebounds Louisville round the world with a spectacular play by Alvin Sims off the pick from Pepe Sanchez but John Cheney's team still had a 13 point lead one of the reasons Dewan Wheat missed firing all afternoon missing again on a wide open three he missed all eight of his threes in the day he had just two points one of 12 from the floor but things were falling for the Owls when they missed Julian Dunkley dunked at home and Denny Crum gets condolences from John Cheney. Cheney goes 4-0 against Conference USA. Big game of the Pac-10, Arizona at Washington. Todd McCullough, huge in the lane, filling it up. Washington led by eight at the break. Second half, they poured on. Jamie Booker, monster alley-oop to Mark Sanford. They still lead by seven. Bob Benford, Bob Bender smells an upset of the Cats. Back comes Arizona. Jason Terry, finished with 23. They cut it to a deuce. But the Huskies hang in there. Donald Watts curls it under and banks it home, and his dad is Slick Watts, minus the headband. He's still slick, though. And Washington knocks off Arizona 92-88, costing the Cats a share of the Pac-10 lead. Slick Garris, the alley up to Chris Gandy. Gandy, a career-high 21. Hoosiers come back from an 11-point deficit. Michael Lewis ties it up at 62. Illinois, though, with an answer. Kevin Turner hits the triple, and the Illini would not look back. Bob Knight wondering what has gone wrong. 78-74, Illinois wins. Georgia Tech visiting number 12 Duke, second half. Jeff Capel, the drive, reverse, and Roshan McLeod throws it down. Duke up 12, McLeod finished with 17. Pick and roll, Capel, nice no-look dish. Rootin' tootin' Greg Newton with some authority there as Duke goes to 6-3 and three in the ACC with a 70-61. to 61. Ladder, four seconds to go. Rutgers by three. Clifton Clark, no. Tim James gets into the corner for the tie. And we are going overtime. Or are we? Bob Wenzel says, hey, that was a two. And the ref agrees. Game, set, match, kaput. Take another look at the foot. And Tim Higgins, the referee, there's that neat editing thing, right there on the corner, and he ruled before the shot even left the hands. A two-pointer. And Leonard Hamilton team loses 60-59. to 59. No real.